So let's move over to what the, the other big international story this week was, the uh, Unite the Right rally, which was in Charlottesville, Virginia. Now, it was organised to protest the removal of Robert E. Lee, who was a, a, a statue of him, uh, who was a, a Confederate uh, general. Now, the, the rally was mainly organised by alt-right and white nationalist groups. And, of course, if... Which, if uh... If there's any rally which uh, you know has any tinge of being right wing, then like left wing groups, including Antifa, Black Lives Matter, of course, arrived to counter protest. And as I mentioned, uh, a protester was killed when a car drove through uh, a crowd of protesters, and there was uh, two state troopers who died in a helicopter crash, which was uh, monitoring the uh, the the protest. Now. The, the alt-right and the white nationalists have been blamed for the violence and the media has been eager to point out that there were uh, people there with like the Nazi flag and uh, Klansmen uh, there. So the, the, the mainstream media and also all like all the establishment politicians, uh, Democrat and Republican, they, they've all you know said, oh, this is all the fault of these neo-Nazis, uh, white supremacists, when, uh, you know, Trump, he has correctly pointed out that it was, like, as always, the, the leftists who uh, instigated this violence. Um, well, Tim, there are many parties to blame, OK? Uh, we've got Antifa, of course, being probably the provokers, but... Uh, ben Shapiro rightly pointed out that we don't really know who started the violence. So I'm wanting to wait for the facts to come in on that ground. Also, the police were ordered to stand down by the mayor. Uh, that shows complete negligence at the hands of the mayor. He let the, or she, let the violence happen there by um, making the police stand down. And also the event organisers uh, are to blame here, I guess, for... Um, their, their permit was revoked, I believe, and they went ahead and, and protested with the knowledge that there would be no police protection uh, from the anti-communist uh, thugs. So it was, it I think was, that all parties are. It was revoked initially, the permit, but uh, it was reinstated because the uh, American Civil Liberties Union appealed to the, the federal court and they, they, they got it reinstated. So they did... Uh, ha have a have a right to be there, um, yeah. And obviously, like you know, the the uh, the, the people who organise these the, this event, such as you know uh, Richard Spencer and David Duke, I don't you know agree with them. And and people who are um, trying to draw attention to uh, Antifa's uh, uh, tactics here and and their violence are accused of you know siding with the you know alt right white nationalists, which which we're not. We're we're making like, what I'm trying to make sure is that the the left don't get away with you know the the chaos that they they caused here because as it's, it's not just uh, this uh, this event even if the the crowd was much more unsavory than the others they've also um, provoked violence in uh, Berkeley uh, California uh, so it's you know they have, it, it doesn't matter if you are you know are actual Nazis or uh, you know just uh, genuine you know, uh, American patriots, like, uh, the Antifa violence needs to stop. Uh, well, you can't really call Antifa or Antifa anything but domestic terrorists and thugs who have the, the goal of destroying property, ruining lives. And the thing that disgusts me most with this Antifa business is they get women into these riots now. Uh, to fight men. So they throw a few punches and they're knocked out. Um, in my opinion, um, people, women don't really belong in a situation where they're brawling and violence. And I think that the men who punch the women also have to have a little hard look at themselves because that's disgusting. But to see that happen isn't good. Uh, and that's where the feminists will say there's no difference between men and women. You can clearly see that there is in a fighting situation. Um, and I think that's disgusting what Antifa are doing, putting their, uh, putting women at the front lines of these riots. Um, and I think that's a major concern as well. 
Uh, I noticed that that was something that Gav Gavin McGuinness pointed out that you know Antifa yeah. they they're eager to throw women into the, into the front line, which is clearly jeopardising their their safety. Now, of course, the the aftermath of it has been a story in itself because Trump has he's he's condemned both sides. He said there was violence on on both sides, and yeah, but but he's also you know correctly pointed out that uh, it was. You know, the mainly you know anti far and the leftists who who provoked this, and like he uh, and he said you know he condemns neo Nazism, white supremacists, but you know the the media and the establishment politicians they they're accusing him of like making excuses for them and also being an enabler uh, of them. I think Trump is probably one of the most progressive Republican presidents. That has ever held um, the Oval Office. Accusing Trump of being a xenophobe, a sexist, a white supremacist is just ridiculous. Uh, it's just a ridiculous notion. Over the years, uh, he's had a black girlfriend, his wife's an immigrant, um, and he, he's, um, he was friends with Michael Jackson, for instance. So to, to accuse him of being some kind of uh, bigot uh, is, I think, ridiculous. Man doesn't have a control over his tongue, but I think his heart's um, not tainted by kind of uh, that kind of bigotry that the media tries to tag him with. The, uh, the, what the media have been uh, try, uh, trying to to point out is that uh, his his condemnation at the because they're they're eager to like promote uh, these alt right people like Richard Spencer and David Duke said that no Trump wasn't you know condemning us and you know we uh, you know we we still support him which the media are saying well look your um, your condemnation it, it it didn't appear to uh, to be interpreted as such by by these figures, so you know it's it's clear that your comments weren't strong enough. And the other issue I noticed they uh, had a quarrel with was the fact that he didn't disavow these people quick enough. Now you you can't win; they're against you. And trying to make um, peace uh, with these people um, is, as Trump noticed, with the media establishment is a waste of time because they will just bend and twist anything uh, to make a Republican president uh, seem to be evil. And they're putting people like Dave Rubin, an open homosexual and Jew, in this Nazi bracket. They're putting Stephen Crowder in that bracket. They're putting Ben Shapiro in this bracket. They're calling everybody Nazis. And then a man comes through with a dodge, runs over a poor woman, injures 19 people, and the word Nazi has no meaning. Uh, the media uh, is to blame for um, calling the people of middle America stupid race, whatever. For years and years and years, this has a bad effect on top of the poor education system. Uh, these are all just the cumulative factors that, um, that are creating the perfect storm, if you will. And I think the reason why, you know, Trump, you know, he didn't want to condemn everybody there because he knew that there, you know, were, were people there who just wanted to, to protest the, the taking down of this, you know, statue because it's, it's, you know, trying to erase a part of US history, which is like, regardless of like what type of people showed up, uh, the, the fact was that this statue should, should not be taken down. Well, let's look at the Middle East. Okay, the oh, Baghdad, uh, until 30, 40 years ago, was described as the Paris of the Middle East. And then we had this wave of regressive, fundamental Islam that wanted to erase history. And look at what ISIS are doing in the Middle East. They are actually using the same tactics that Antifa are using. They're actually pulling over um, statues. They're actually blowing out mosques. So these... This is pretty much terrorism. It's trying to erase history, trying to change history uh, to mean something that it's not. And if we forget the past, uh, we will make the same mistake in the future. Oh, well, just in the past few days, uh, Antifa, they, tore, they, they actually took it upon themselves to tear down a Confederate statue in, in North Carolina. And... 
it was it was interesting to con uh, contrast that with the, there was a protest outside because there's a statue, believe it or not, of Vladimir Lenin in Seattle. So um, right right <laughs> right wing protesters they you know they they were there you know calling for the the statue to to be like taken down. But of course they're not going to commit an illegal act of you know like. Uh, vandalizing a public monument they want to you know taken down through you know the proper ways they're not going to take it upon themselves and engage in vigilantism so i think that's a, a good contrast between the two sides i still think that we need to be the side of politics that uh, encourages civility uh, and honesty and uh, meritocracy and i think that we are but i think there are some rogue elements um, who are in our camp, the Jared Taylors, the Richard Spencers, that we should disavow because I think that the right is the home of kind of classical liberalism, uh, which is, you know, pro-individual liberty and that's good, but we need to disavow the rogue elements of our movement so they don't tarnish um, what we've been making up. Oh, yeah, ab absolutely, I agree. Um, but I think uh, we also want to, and this is where Trump's getting into trouble. Make sure that you know we also, you know, highlight you know what the what the left is doing as well, and you know we just not need to, you know, dismiss this. You know, it was entirely the you know the fault of the the far right. The the left played their role as well, and th this is why you know Trump has said it was both sides. Well, rightly so. Um... I, I largely, I, I agree with that, Jim, I, I agree with that, but um, I, I come down harder on the people in, in my house, obviously, because I see them as disrupting where we're going, we're going in a good direction, it seems to be a global turn to kind of classical liberal ideas, uh, but I think the left is largely, if not in 9 out of 10 cases, has been the instigator of violence, extreme violence. Um, you just look at the streets all across America, um, there's just been extreme violence. It's all instigated by the left. Um, and I saw one instance, one ironic in, uh, instance, where Antifa actually threw, I think, a Molotov cocktail at a Starbucks, but they were inadvertently funding their activity. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they, but they, um, they blew up the Starbucks, pretty much. 